Hi, my name is Kevin and I collect old irons. As we saw in our previous video, small sat irons were quite popular in the United States in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These were used for dainty laundry work such as lace and between the buttons or for toys. The irons were often very simply made, sometimes cast of a, of a single part. And these are now very common in antique shops and sell for modest prices. But there's another half of the story, and that is the small irons of old Europe. These were often individually crafted, uh, made not so much of cast, but of, of forged and, and wrought iron, and oftentimes incorporating polished copper or brass or other exotic metals. Europe surely had plenty of privileged kids, but I don't know if the rich little girls lusted after toy irons. The ironing was largely done by people in service to the estates. So while these may have seen some use of, as toys, they were not seen as toys as commonly as in the United States. These European smalls are for the serious and specialized collectors, and they generally fall outside my more pedestrian interests and budget. As with the large European irons, I only have a few to give some context to my generally American collection, so let's explore these small European irons. So let's start with a couple of small European irons in my own collection. This is a small goffer. Its uh, barrel is about two and a half inches long. The um, base here is, is three inches long. It includes the original slug. Rather small in size, this could be used, I think, as a working iron, but it is rather lightly built, and my guess is that this was used as a toy, perhaps by a little girl who wanted to make hats for her doll. This is an iron I recently found in a touristed area of southern Maine. It's pretty, it's very brassy, it has some weight to it. It was sold to me as having come from England, but I believe this is Belgian, maybe Danish. I would call this probably a working iron, judging by its, by its weight. And age, hard to say, there are no markings. I'm going to guess that this may be the very early 1900s, that was a very brassy era. Because I know that people are interested in values for these things, I paid $150 for this. Here is another very brassy small iron. The length is four inches. This is also a fairly common style and composed of parts that are cast. This is a slug iron and includes a slug. Judging by the shape of the wood handle and the screws that connect the handle to the base, I would guess this to also be from the late 1800s to early 1900s. This iron sold at the Balestri auction in 2018 for $100. Here is another fairly ordinary fairly late small European iron. This is a coal iron, probably German, again late 1800s or so. Size is four and a quarter inches, so about 11 centimeters. Value here is maybe 50 to $100, though this one sold at Dave Irons auction for $25. Good deal. We have not previously in these videos encountered this metal strap handle, which is quite common in a variety of European irons, though never seen in the US. Obviously, this, as is, would not be comfortable to use. Originally, these most often had a leather handle, but the leather seldom survives. But there was another material used for these strap handles. Wood. This is a wood handle. It has two halves. It's hinged, and it just snaps right around the handle like that. So this is an European equivalent for a detachable handle iron, probably, again, late 1800s, and by and large, these are of Belgian design, and we can see that Belgian character by the round back. And let me here give thanks to Jim Geiser, who provided many of the photos we'll be using in this video. Jim and his wife, Robin, have been collecting these small irons, both European and American, for 40 years. And they have published a very nice book called Tuesday's Reflections. The book nicely complements the Pulitzer books that we've seen earlier. The book was self-published in small numbers and was completely unavailable. I could not find a copy, but with my prompting, the book has been recently updated and reprinted, and these are now available at $45 postpaid in the United States. If you have interest in 
small irons, you should have this book. I will include the Geisert's email address in the description. You can buy a copy through them. Let's get into some older European irons. Again, pictures from the Geisarts. This is a Dutch round back charcoal iron from the 1700s. Measures four inches. Beautiful, brassy. At this size, I think more likely a working iron than a toy, though there are similar and more simply built irons that I think would be toys. Value of this is maybe $500, but smaller ones will be more valuable. As Jim says for the smaller irons, price increases as the size decreases, and that increase is exponential. Here is a French small iron that measures four inches. The rear post is in a design called a stirrup, with two posts at the bottom that merge into a single post near the handle. The stirrups are mostly from France or Italy. There is a button near the rear posts that when pushes releases a spring that opens the rear gate to expose the slug. Jim Geisert estimates that this is from circa 1840 and has a value of plus or minus $1,500. Here is a Swedish slug iron. Measures three and a half inches. It dates to the late 1700s. This is a handmade iron with wrought pieces and a simple lift gate at the rear. The base, which is sometimes known as a box, is made of three pieces. Top, bottom, and the two sides that are really one piece bent at the front. These three pieces are held together by posts inside the three corners. Inside the box is an S-shaped piece of metal that serves as something of a stand that elevates the slug above the base to more equally distribute the heat. You can in this photo see the post inside the front corner. These details inside the box are important in identifying the age and the nationality of European irons. The handle is attached to the base by two hand forged screws which include holes near the top. These attachments are an indicator of early age. Jim Geiser puts a circa $500 value to this. This is an English slug iron of similar construction measuring 2 and 7 eighths inches that also has the hand forged screws with holes near the top which helped to also identify this iron to the late 1700s. As with the previous iron, the box is made of separate pieces that are forged together and you can see lines that show where these separate pieces connected. Jim also values this iron at circa $500. The general configuration of this English iron is very common. Here is another English iron from my own collection of similar design, measures four inches long, the general design seems sort of flimsy, but the handle is securely attached to the box. I have never seen a loose handle. Um, if you look inside the box, you would see some pegs that attach the handle to the box, but there must be some kind of welding process involved. The box itself is forged apparently as a single piece, and Jim Geisert and I have gone back and forth as we're trying to figure out perhaps how this forging and how the handle is attached. However it was done, this was a very successful design. These British irons have something like a 200 year history. The details, however, are quite different from the previous English iron we looked at, yet the general shape is very much the same. Even the wooden handle is very similar between the two types, yet these two irons are separated by 100 years or more. The subtle details that I mentioned here that distinguish the older versus the more recent relate to many of the European irons. The outward general design was traditional and used for centuries. Here is where the early European irons differ so much from the later American. For the Americans, every company would innovate a whole new design with proud statements about exclusive patents. For the Europeans, the designs were traditional and many companies made irons that were very similar and could only be distinguished by subtle details. Let us go back to the brassy irons. This is a Belgian round back slug iron with a flower design etched into the top. There is a small lift latch in the side that allows the gate to be opened on a hinge. This is from the mid 1800s, valued at about $600. And here is what I consider a real gem from the Geiser collection. This is a German or Austrian slug iron made of brass with wood handle and a wood knob on the lift back. Measures three and seven eighths inches, almost exactly 10 centimeters. This is dated 1784 and inscribed 
translated from the German, Fritz Meyer for my sweetheart, Rudy. This is probably a wedding or maybe a courting gift. Irons were quite common as wedding gifts, either from the groom to his betrothed, as I think was the case in this iron, or sometimes a matched pair would be presented, his and hers, maybe from an uncle with an odd sense of humor, since I doubt the husband was going to do much ironing. This iron is magnificent. Value here, maybe $2,000. I hope that we can see more of these extraordinary slug irons of larger size in the next video. And let us finish this video with pictures of a couple of irons that will be sold at the first Buck Carson auction. Here is a pair of irons, in this case Scottish irons. These are not marked, though I don't think I've ever seen personal markings on a Scottish iron. I feel pretty confident in thinking that these would be a wedding pair. These are matched, each three and three quarter inches long. Original handles, turn posts, no slugs. The value given in the auction listing for this pair is $3,006,000, but there are people who have particular interest in these pairs, and I think the price could go higher. And here is another iron from the Buck Carson auction. This is Danish and measures three and three quarter inches, marked MSS and the year, 1771. Nice details around the edge and an engraved garden scene on top. This has a bone handle with dolphin posts. The dolphin posts are quite a common motif among the older European irons. Nice, valued at $1,000 to $2,000. That Buck Carson auction is in our near future, about two weeks from the time when this video is being made. I will post the prices for those last two irons in the descriptions if you're curious. And I will be going to that meeting and I hope to see you perhaps in a video recorded there and see some of you personally in Pittsburgh then. For now, take care. <laughs>